What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I want to do a comparison video between the brand new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3, the 11 inch Chrome OS tablet, and I want to compare that to the HP Chromebook X211. Which one is better and which one should you consider buying? Let's find out right now and let's get into this comparison. Now if we take a look at both of these tablets, you are going to see that they are very, very similar in many ways. Both of these tablets do come with a case, and the case is actually magnetic. It actually attaches to the back of the tablet. In both of those cases, they do have kickstands that have a lot of various positions. They go back and forth so that you could adjust them very similar in a lot of ways to a Surface Pro, except it's actually built into a case and not the tablet itself. And these tablets both come with keyboards that are actually magnetically attachable to the tablet. They both have similar performance because they both have Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C processors. Now the Duet 3 technically has a Gen 2 version of that processor and the HP Chromebook X2 it has a Gen 1 version of that processor. Honestly they are very very similar in performance. It's maybe a 5% difference where the Duet 3 is a little bit faster but honestly most people won't even notice the difference in performance because again they are essentially the same processor with some minor modifications. So honestly Honestly, performance will be very, very similar. The displays also have a similar resolution, so they're going to be very, very close as far as the screen quality. Neither one of these devices have OLED panels, and both of these devices are very, very bright as far as the brightness goes. I think they are more than bright enough for your average user. But the difference in these two tablets, it really comes down to the minor details that people need to think about. If you look at the design, for example, the HP Chromebook X2, it actually comes with a fingerprint sensor. You're not going to see that on the Lenovo Chromebook Duet. The fingerprint sensor is really, really nice if you actually want to secure your device and if you don't want to have to type in a password every single time. You also get an SD card slot on that HP and that's a really, really big deal for those of you who want to expand your storage. And one of the big bonuses you're going to see in that HP Chromebook X2 is the fact that it comes with a stylus. You can always buy a stylus on the side with the Chromebook Duet, but it's really nice to get a stylus in the box with the HP and it just magnetizes to the side of the tablet and that's a really really big deal for those of you who are again looking for a good value. Now you have to consider the price as well of course when you're considering all these extras that come in because the HP yes it does retail at like $600 but it has been going on sale for around $299 at Best Buy. Now the Chromebook Duet retails at a lower price at about $370 but we've seen it go on sale right at launch for again right under $300 so the price point is going to be very very, very similar on these two devices. So seeing HP throw those little extra bonuses like the SD card slot, the fingerprint sensor, and even seeing a stylus thrown in the box, that is a really, really big deal again if you're looking for a good value. And you will notice some minor differences in the devices themselves. Of course, you do have two USB-C ports on the HP Chromebook X2, but they're both on one side of the tablet. The Chromebook Duet, however, it does have a USB-C port on the left and on the right side of the tablet so that you could charge your device from both sides of the tablet and that is a really really big deal for those of you who really don't know which side of the couch you're going to sit on on a given day. It's really nice to know that no matter which side you sit on you could still charge your device depending on of course where your charger is. I also think that the Chromebook Duet is a little bit lighter and that's a really, really big deal as well. It's a little more portable. Even if it's just two or three ounces lighter, I can really notice the difference in weight between these two devices. And the Chromebook Duet will be a little bit more portable, which again is pretty darn nice. And if you look at the keyboards, you will notice some minor differences with the keys. Now, for whatever reason, I love the Chromebook Duet and the feel of the keys. It's really hard to explain. They don't feel quite as smooth as something like the HP Chromebook X2, but I just like the texture of the keys. And again, that's hard to explain, but I just like how the keys feel on the Chromebook Duet. The other thing I like is that the Chromebook Duet has a sturdier keyboard. So the keyboard, if you do try to flex it, it's not going to flex very much because the keyboard just has, again, a little bit of a sturdier build, which I really, really like. And one thing you're going to notice with the HP is that the keyboard is just a little bit flimsier. And that's not a terrible thing if you want a good lightweight keyboard. But on the other hand, it's just not 
not quite as good to type on in my experience. Now, yes, it does have a magnetic typing experience. And what I mean by that is that it's very similar to a Surface Pro where the keyboard will magnetize to the device to give you this angled typing experience. That's an awesome thing if you like that type of thing. And if you compare that to the Lenovo, again, you won't get that angled typing experience. So you may feel like the HP is actually better to type on. And that really may be your preference. But I have to say one thing, if I'm being honest with the HP Chromebook X2, it just really bothered me with that tablet is the fact that it was very very flimsy on the keyboard. So if I was using this device on my lap and let's say I didn't have a lot of support underneath the tablet, I was noticing that there would be some accidental trackpad clicks because I would just rest my palms on the keyboard deck itself and even that pressure from my palms would cause some weird accidental clicks. It's not a big deal if you're using that tablet with some support underneath you or if you're using that tablet on something like a desk, but it is something to keep in mind. Some of you might be annoyed with that. But I do think that angled type typing experience does make up for that. So in a lot of ways, the keyboard experience is very, very similar as far as the quality, and it comes down to preference. For me, I did prefer the Duet because I do prefer the feel of the keys, and I would rather have a sturdier keyboard, but you do have to keep in mind the trackpad is a little bit smaller on the Duet, and I do think that's because of that angled typing experience on the HP that does give the tablet a little bit of extra room to fit a little bit of a larger trackpad. Now, if I look at the displays on these devices, I don't notice a significant difference. In my opinion, I think the Lenovo has slightly better colors. I do think that the Lenovo looks ever so slightly punchier and a little bit better, but honestly, it's a very, very close call. I don't think your average person is gonna notice. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And when you look at performance, you do have to keep in mind a few different things. Now, performance will be very, very similar as far as benchmarks and as far as actual daily usage. I don't think you're gonna notice a big difference between these two devices. The Lenovo may have like a 5% edge, but honestly, it's very, very close. But if you look at other things like RAM, for example, the HP technically has eight gigabytes of RAM. Now the Lenovo has four gigabytes of RAM as of now. I know they may release an eight gigabyte of RAM version soon, maybe even by the time you watch this video. I know they have a 13 inch model of this tablet with eight gigs of RAM, but when you only have four gigabytes of RAM in the 11 inch model, I know that may bother some people out there. Now in my daily usage, I was actually using this with 10, 11, or even 12 Chrome tabs open. And in my experience, I didn't really notice a difference between the four gigs of RAM on the Lenovo and the eight gigs of RAM on the HP. So honestly, that RAM thing, it might not be a big deal to you, but it is something to keep in mind. RAM actually helps you to multitask on your device. It does help your computer to handle all these extra instances or these extra programs that are all open at the same time. So HP having a little more RAM, it is a big deal. And I know some of you will appreciate that. I think the battery life is very similar on these devices. I would give a slight edge to the Lenovo Chromebook Duet, but honestly, I think the battery will be very similar on both. I think you'll get around seven to 12 hours of battery life. So when we factor all these in, and when you're really deciding which device you wanna buy, I would say it's a very close call between these two devices. The HP does have some extra bonuses that a lot of you will appreciate. Again, it does have that eight gigabytes of RAM, which is really, really nice. And at least as of today, maybe when you're watching this video, it will be different, but again, Lenovo just doesn't have that yet, right? So HP, at least for now, it does have extra RAM. You also have to look at something like the pen. It comes with a stylus in the box. It comes with an SD card. It comes with a fingerprint sensor. All of those things will be a really big deal to some people. And I do think that those things really give HP an edge, at least as far as value goes. But if you look at something like the Lenovo, the Lenovo has a lot to offer as well. It does have a USB-C port on both sides. So that means you could charge your device from both sides of the tablet. And for me, that is a big deal. For other people, they might prefer to get a stylus in the box, right? So it really does depend on who you are. But I like the Lenovo as far as the design. I do like the Lenovo having, for example, a nicer, sturdier keyboard. In my opinion, I like the keyboard a little bit more. Some people might prefer the angled typing experience on the HP. And the HP does have a decent typing experience for an 11-inch tablet. But I would prefer the Lenovo by a little 
little bit just because it's a little bit sturdier at least as far as the keyboard deck. And I would prefer the Lenovo as far as the weight. It's a little bit lighter. But honestly, look at these things, right? It's very, very similar, right? You may prefer to get a 5% performance boost on the Lenovo. You may prefer to get that keyboard that's a little bit sturdier. And you may prefer a device that is a little bit lighter with USB-C ports on both sides. But all those things are super, super minor. And you may prefer the HP because it has a stylus, because it has an angled typing experience. You may prefer eight gigabytes of RAM or having an SD card slot, right? So it really depends on who you are. Both of these tablets are tremendous. I think they are great values. And I would highly recommend either one of these tablets if you find them at $300 or below, or even $350 or below, right? But I would say that you're finding these devices very often on sale around 300 bucks. And I think price will be a big factor for a lot of you. If you find one of these devices on sale, the other device isn't on sale, that may help you make up your mind. Of course, remember, these are budget devices or mid-range devices, right? These are not the high-end Android tablets of the world, but you're still going to get around eight years of software updates on both devices, a lot of similar things, similar performance. I think the display quality is very, very similar between these two devices, and it really does just depend on who you are and what you prefer in a tablet. Hopefully this comparison has helped you, and if it has, please give me a like on this video and a sub. It would mean a lot. And another way that you could help me, look, I am a smaller YouTuber. I don't make all the big bucks like a lot of other YouTubers. So one way that you can help me is just using my affiliate links in the description. If you just use them, even if you buy something random, right? If you use those links to get to these websites, it can help me earn an affiliate commission, which of course I do appreciate for my family. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm very happy to help with everything I can. So I hope you all have a great day. And if you have any more time, feel free to check out some other videos as well. Have a good one. Thank you.